What's up guys, Steve here, AKA your nerd tech. Now I don't know about you, but I have always been curious on how in the heck do these iPod Nanos come apart? Because there just ain't very much to them. And I wanna see what the inside of these things look like. So stick around, cause I'm gonna take mine apart. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take apart my iPod Nano. This is the fourth generation. Uh, you are gonna need a couple tools for this. Go ahead and bust open my iFixit Pro Toolkit. A um, couple things you're gonna need. Uh, tweezers are really gonna come in handy. Uh, there's a couple wires that are a little bit difficult to get your fingers into, but if you have small fingers, you should be all right. But uh, I find tweezers is gonna help out a lot. Well, iFixit likes to call the iPod opener. Uh, screwdriver set, but the main one you're gonna need is a PH000 uh, bit. Uh, I think there's only five screws in this whole thing. A plastic spudger or nylon spudger, uh, also known as black sticks. And I'm gonna have a metal spudger just to be on the safe side. I'll have links down in the description below uh, if you want this kit, or I'll have a couple of the other ones that are separate. All right, guys, just to let you know, you are taking a risk at damaging the iPod to the point where it will not work. Uh, I'm also taking the risk of my own taking this apart. Uh, I'm no Apple professional, so don't take my exact word on it. But if you do want to do this uh, for yourself, feel free. All right, so I got my tools here. I got the iPod here. Let's go ahead and take it apart. Uh, just reading a couple little notes on the Internet. Um, first thing you want to do is take the top and the bottom off. Eh, bottom looks easier, so let's go ahead and take your, your iPod opener. Just grabbing the edge there. And that piece just comes right off. Same for the top. And that piece comes off. These tops are just held on by a little bit of adhesive. Now do be careful when you take that off. Uh, if you can see here, there is just a little metal plastic piece, uh, not plastic, but there's a little metal piece in there that controls the switch for the locking. And your tweezers can come in handy here. That's the piece right there. All right, so the next thing to do, uh, there's two very tiny uh, at an angle Phillips screws in the corners here. This is where that triple zero screwdriver is going to come in handy. Be very careful with these screws. Um, one, they're very small, so if you drop them, uh, you're taking the extreme high risk of losing them. And guys, when I mean small, I mean they're small. And you can strip them extremely easily. All right. So there's those screws. All right, while we have the screwdriver, let's go ahead and take out the three screws that's on the bottom. You have two on the sides, and then you have one in the middle. And the one in the middle is a little bit longer than the ones on the sides. So make sure that you keep that middle one separate from the other two. All right, now, now that we get the screws out of the bottom, where the adapter plugs into, there's a little aluminum shield that's down there. Uh, you can bend this extremely easily, so I do recommend that you be very gentle with it. Uh, but that does need to come out. And do your best to get, to get it out. There we go. So it just popped out there. And that's it right there. Alright, so the next thing you want to do is you want to get the screen uh, moved slightly up out of the casing here. Uh, to do that, you can use the... Um, the plastic uh, uh, iPod opener. Uh, this one I've come to find out, the metal uh, spudger seems to get just a little bit of a better grip on it. Uh, but just like before, be very careful with these parts. All the parts in this thing are very delicate. All right, so now you can see here, I slightly have it out of the case. Uh, you don't want to pull it all the way, one, because there's a cable that runs against this side right here that plugs into the screen. And also, that switch that locks it is right there. 
and there's a cable that's attached to it and those break extremely easily. So you just part way pull it up and you can start to see that cable. Uh, first thing you want to do is this switch is adhered on. So just take your plastic uh, tool and just slightly pry up on it until it comes out. You see there, got it off. And then you want to pull this screen just enough. You don't want to yank it out because you're going to break that cable. But to where you get about, it's probably about a half an inch uh, gap between the bottom of the glass and the screen. So next thing you want to do is get this glass out. Now to get the glass out, take both your thumbs, push down, and then slide them down uh, on the glass. So push down. And then, and then slide down and when you do that you hear a little bit of a pop and the glass here pops up from the top and it comes out now this is going to be the first cable you work with besides the one on the back with the switch uh, this is one of those that I've showed you before it's called a zip connector uh, this one uh, this is the one that Apple likes to use instead of the flips being in the front with the cable uh, they use the ones that flip from the back right here so what you're going to do, you're going to flip that up. It's really hard to show you these little tiny things, guys, but it just flips straight up. And then this cable, there's a little metal piecing uh, underneath this cable that it's adhered to, but that metal is going to slide out with the screen. So we need to uh, get that part off. And this is where the tweezers come in handy because you can get just slightly under there and get it off. Because these, um, these cables are very delicate and you're going to take the chance of breaking it. If you do that, well, <laughs> bye bye iPod. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tweezers and just slightly pry up on this cable. Alright, so I got the cable out of the connector there and then I got also got it off that metal bracking. It looks like I missed a little bit of the glue. There we go. And now once you get that cable free, slides right out and there's the screen that's it look how tiny they made these things alright so since we already did the bottom piece we don't have to worry about that uh, this right here is the battery but the battery is actually adhered onto the board that's in the square piece here and it's glued onto the back of the casing as well now you could kinda heat this up a little bit but uh, it's not very strong so what you can do is you can take your spudger. Uh, the plastic one, I realized that this is a little too thick and it kind of bows the battery a little bit. That battery, I'm telling you guys, is extremely flimsy. And you could take this thing and pinch it and it just, it'll fold right over. Um, and I, I don't want to damage it a whole, whole lot. So I thought this was a little too thick. This one was a little bit thinner. It had a little bit of a longer piece. So all you're going to do is stick it right in the top there behind the casing or behind the battery and along the casing and then what you're going to do is you're going to start pushing the, on the battery and out at the bottom will start coming the board now when you start pulling this out only pull it out slightly because there's a cable that connects to the click wheel and you have to disconnect that and take the zip connector off of the board before you can pull it out but it's only glued on so it shouldn't be too difficult I'm going to start and see if I can get an angle for you guys. Alright, and now you can see the board slightly is coming out. And like I said, you only want to slightly pull it out. You don't want to go crazy with it. All you want is just to, to just see... You want to just see that ZIF connector. All right, so what we're going to do is once again take your tweezers again and this is another one of those uh, flip zip connectors so the flip is on the back you flip that up and then you the cable is glued down and then you just pull it out Be easy with the glue but that's not the only thing you got to do on the other end there's a cable that's running to the zip connector and you have to uh, get that off of the board because that's not coming out with the board, that's going to come out with the click wheel. Take your plastic tool 
And I realized that coming from the back, where the cable is instead of the front, go where the back is because you're going to take the chance of breaking the zip connector. So come from the back with the cable and work your way uh, towards the cable. And it comes off like so. And now you can gently pull out the board. And that is all that is to the iPod Nanos. As you can see, that's it. It's mainly just a battery. And now if you needed to, like, if the battery was bad in this thing, uh, it is just glued on to the back. But the only thing is the cable that goes to this is soldered onto the board. So you do need a little bit of soldering skills, but it's not too difficult. Well, now we're only missing one piece to the thing, and that's the click wheel. So to get the click wheel out, there's a couple ways you can do it. Uh, it's just adhered on to the casing. Uh, you can push on the click wheel and press it out. Um, you can be a little bit more gentle with it. And in the inside, there is a metal like bracket that sits with it. And you can slightly peel it off. So you can get in there and just slightly peel it, but it is quite difficult. And while you're doing that to help, you can push on the wheel with it. Same thing with the back. And now, we have the all-famous click wheel. That's all to it. There's that little zip connected too that I was telling you about it's attached to it. And then here's the casing. Now, I did see people actually take these casings, you know, just completely hollow them out like this, and then buy different colors or buy some custom made ones. Uh, I was having a hard time finding anywhere to buy them. I mean, I, it, for the fact that just they're so old now, it's, it's probably hard to find them nowadays. But I do wish I could find one um, and do something with it. Maybe get like a clear one or something. That would be pretty cool. Um, even though it's old, it still works and it would look pretty cool. But Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find one. So if you guys do know of one, put it down in the comments below. And uh, maybe I'll do a video of switching the guts out into it. All right, guys. So that shows you how there is not much that go into these little iPod Nanos. Um, I was pretty amazed on how much technology they can pack into that little spot. And nowadays, they pack a lot more into a lot more tighter spots. So it's really cool to see how technology grows like that. Uh, that kind of stuff just amazes me. Uh, I am sorry that it did take me a little bit longer to get this video out than usual. Uh, I've just been so slammed with uh, this semester of school and work. Uh, the end of the semester is coming up, so I've been having a lot of tests to study for. So I've been trying to work in the, uh, the mix of school and work. All right, I hope you enjoyed this little teardown video of my iPod Nano. Uh, if you liked the video, if you could just hit the thumbs up button down below, that helps the video out a lot. All right, guys, you have a great one, and I'll catch you next week. Alright guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you haven't already, if you could please just take a second and subscribe to my channel, it really does help me out. Also, if you missed last week's video, you can check it out right here. Also, if you want to chat with me, I have links down in the description below to my Facebook. Also, if you want little teasers of the next week's video coming up, you can check me out at Instagram, and I'll be posting pictures throughout the week of the next video coming up. Alright guys, you have a great week, and until next time, and as always, get nerdy.